Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be looking at some threading issues. So we're not we're not actually going to be working with this executor service code that we had before, but I wanted to highlight a potential problem. What we had is before what we were doing is we were generating these callable, and inside each callable, what we were doing is we were sorting each list. But what if on the main thread, um, I don't know, maybe we fired up a new thread so that it wouldn't block because we were uh, because of this invoke call. So suppose we fired up a new thread over here, and what we did is uh, maybe something like this. If we did this, and then we modified uh, maybe one of the one of the array lists inside of here, maybe we removed every item while it was being sorted. So notice, I mean, this not, this is this probably might. Not this, this probably isn't going to happen every single time we run our program, but maybe it'll happen just by chance that while we're sorting a list, we modify it so that maybe we remove every item. Then what? Well, then the result is undefined, and we're going to have a very weird error that we that's going to be hard to track down. So this is one potential issue with multi-threading. Um, I'm going to go into some more uh, through the rest of this video. So without further ado, let's just get rid of this code. And let's um, let's uh, create a new class. And this is going to be just a very simple class. It's going to be called counter. And what we're going to do is we're just going to have a variable called x. We're going to have a variable called x, and we're going to have a default constructor. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to have a method called add. And all that's all just that's just going to do x plus plus. And then public void sub, and that's just going to do x minus minus. So add adds one, and then sub sub or subtract, uh, it subtracts one. Fair enough, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do counter counter is equal to uh, a new counter, and counter dot add, and counter dot sub. So x should be zero after we do this, and public void public uh, x we're just going to return it like this then what we can do is we can just do system dot out dot printer when x okay so x is zero right very straightforward now suppose we do this and suppose we fired up one thread we fired up one thread that takes in a runnable and what we do is we immediately start it we immediately start it, and what we do inside of this thread is we just do counter dot add. So we're just going to add one to counter, and then we do the same thing here. We're just going to create a new thread, a new runnable, and let's add counter dot sub. All right, run, and okay. So what should we should we print it out over here? Okay, so we're going to leave the print statement out here just to see what happens. So in this case, if printed out one, um, but maybe we should put it over here. So it printed out one when we put it outside the thread, prints out zero when we put it inside this thread. If we run it again, it still says zero, zero, zero. So it says zero pretty reliably. Um, and then we can maybe do it like this. Print out one, one, one. So I guess it doesn't seem like there is an issue, but the main problem is that the order in which these operations happen, um, they're not reliable. So what happens is that we have this one variable inside of this counter uh, class called x, and each of these threads might have a might hold a different value for that value x. So this first thread, it might, you know, it might say that okay, x starts at value zero, and so then it's going to add something to it. So now this this second thread right here might have might hold a different value of x. So I mean, like, why why would that happen? Well, one scenario, um, remember that threads might execute on different uh, processors, right? So what could happen is that we have a certain value for maybe processor one that's cached in memory. Okay, so what a cache means is that you, instead of um, reading it from RAM, you kind of hold it so it's a little faster to access or a little easier to access, right? So we might have one value of x up here, but then on maybe processor two, we 
might have a different value of x that is also cached and hasn't been updated in a while. So we're not looking at the correct value of x. So that's, it's, I, I'm kind of fudging around it, but that's kind of like the intuitive explanation for why, um, you know, we might run into memory consistency errors. Another issue is that um, suppose we add, right? So suppose we call this add method, and then immediately at the same time, we also call this sub subtract method. And suppose maybe that um, this add method is slightly slow. It's slightly slower than the subtract method. So somehow we fit in two, two calls to the subtract method for only one call for this add method. And so we'd be subtracting twice instead of um, uh, subtracting once and then adding once as we should. Okay, so when I first, I know, when I first learned about these issues, I didn't quite believe them, or I didn't quite believe it. I mean, because like, I mean, how, in what situations would it ever happen that we would get two subtract calls for one add call, right? It just doesn't seem intuitive or likely to happen. So let's um, let's let's slow our program down on purpose. What we're gonna do is we're just going to we're not gonna do anything special. We're just going to uh, you know just have a for loop that adds um, i a thousand times. So we're just going to add one to i a thousand times. It's not actually going to do anything, but this is going to purpose on pur like it's going to stall this add method on purpose. By doing that, we might be able to fit in multiple calls of the subtract method if we can, um, if uh, if our computer is fast enough to uh, create the threads, right? So, in order to do this and just to see the uh, results, what we should, what we can do is let's uh, let's let's. So what we're going to do is uh, let's. Uh, so this is going to be an array list of threads, and we're just going to call these threads. And this is going to, you know, it's just going to be like that. We're going to instantiate it like that. And now let's uh, create a hundred. We're going to create two hundred different threads. This is extreme, but just to really demonstrate how this is working. And we're going to say that thread t is equal to that. And then we're going to say that thread t2 is equal to this new thread that subtracts. And then all we're going to do is we're just going to threads.add t and then threads.add t2. And then we need to start each thread. So we'll do t.start and then we'll do t2.start. Okay, so before we continue, um, notice that if we didn't have these threads, if we weren't putting this add and subtract methods, if we weren't doing them inside of threads, then um, what would the result be? Well, if we just did this, for example, if we just had counter.add and counter.subtract, and then imagine we didn't have any of this other stuff inside this for loop, the result would be zero because we're adding one and then we're subtracting one on every, uh, every time we run our loop, right? Uh, pretty straightforward. But now, okay, so now we have our threads, and, and remember we have our junk code in here that slows this add method down on purpose. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to wait for all of these threads to finish executing, and then we're going to print out the final value of x that we get. So to do this, let's, uh, let's use another for loop, or actually, even better, we can open up a stream, and then just use for each, and then what we're going to do is we're going to be provided with a thread, and we are just going to do, and I think I forgot our parentheses down here, thread.join, and this is going to throw an exception, so let's handle that inside of our lambda expression. And okay, let's run this guy now. So we run it the first time, we get zero, that's correct, we get zero again, we get zero, we get zero, zero, and okay, so what happened here? We got negative one. Well, this is this is the type of problem I'm talking about. What's happening is that maybe we might be getting two invocations of the subtract method for one invocation of this add method, and um, that's just because we have this code that's slowing it down on purpose. And just to maybe increase the frequency of that negative one happening, we got another negative one, and if we keep running. It's taking longer and longer. Let me throw these guys in the background. It doesn't seem to be happening anymore. 
but we did see it happen twice and that's all that i mean even if it happens once it breaks your program because your program should be what we call deterministic every time you run it the same thing should happen or it should be predictable if something bad happens it should happen predictably like right now we can't predict when we're going to get a negative one or when we're going to get a one um and that's not good right so the way we fix this problem is we use something called synchronized methods or synchronization. What we do is it's very simple. We just add the synchronized statement in front of um, the add, subtract, and get methods. What this does is it makes sure that... So, okay, so, so, so we're at here, right? So we're in this first thread T. And what we're doing is we're doing this counter.add method call. So what that's going to do is it's going to go inside of here. Because we have this synchronized method call, it, in, it creates something called an intrinsic lock, right? So what that does is it makes it so that any other thread trying to access any other synchronized method will block. So if we add, and then immediately afterwards we have some other thread, maybe T2, that attempts to call this subtract method, while we're still in this add method, this subtract method, this other thread, it's going to, it's going to wait. It's going to wait until the first thread has finished doing whatever it needed to do with this add method. Furthermore, it's going to make it so that we're not using any of those cached variables um, that we were talking about before. Remember, we have cached variables that might be stored in different processors. What happens is that cache kind of gets flushed so that we have the, so that the most uh, current value of that is visible to every single, uh, every thread that might be trying to access it. And so by including this synchronized uh, statement right here, we're preventing or we're, we're making sure that um, we get deterministic output. We're making sure that um, when we add, anytime another threat attempts to subtract or maybe add again, for example, they're going to block. And let's just run this again. And now we could run this a billion times and we wouldn't get a negative one again. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, so um, this uh, covered this video covered uh, synchronized methods, and it covered intrinsic blocks. Before we go, actually, I want to cover one more thing. How does a synchron? Well, there's another way of uh, looking at synchronized um, um, methods, and I guess it might make it a little more clear as to how they work in terms of locks and stuff. Instead of using a synchronized method, you can use what's called a synchronized block. So what a synchronized block does is it creates a lock around an object. Um, in this case, when we do synchronize this, what it means is that, okay, so if I call this add method on counter, right, then I'm going to go inside of this method called add, and then I'm immediately going to uh, enter into this synchronized statement. What it does is it creates around this uh, counter object so it makes it so no one else can call the subtract or get x methods. It's um, it's entirely it's entirely equivalent to doing what we had before, which was just having the synchronized uh, statement appear. But if you had maybe another object, right? So suppose we had object or maybe something like private object obj2, something like that, right? Well, this is useful because you can do something where you have something like synchronized obj2, and so now you create around a now you create a lock around the obj2 object, but you don't have a lock on these other uh, methods or variables on the uh, uh, counter class. So threads can access them freely, and so you might get uh, small performance benefits from that. I guess. So actually, yeah, I wanted to mention that also before um, we left. Um, or before this video ended, and that is that using synchronized methods, there is a performance drawback to them because uh, now your program has to create these locks and make sure that uh, the value is uh, the most uh, recent value and so that you know, you're know you not running into these memory consistency errors. So use these um, whenever you're working with multi-threaded code, but just be aware that they will have a performance drawback on your code. Anyways, that wraps up that's that wraps it up for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.